Welcome everybody in to the 2021 WAC Football Preview Day. I'm Rachel V. Hill. Excited to be sitting down with some members of the Dixie State football team. How's everybody doing? Awesome. It's Good. a fun day so far. Yeah. So with us we have head coach Paul Peterson, quarterback Cody Wildstead, and then linebacker Malaki Malaki. How is everybody? So we're doing good, obviously. Coach mentioned. What about you two? We're just having fun, having a good time being around all the other players that are here, you know, talking, meeting some new people. It's been fun. It's great. Good. <laughs> Happy to hear. Well, obviously Dixie State has been part of the WAC for a few years now, but now that it's a football conference, what's the biggest takeaway for you as a coach? Yeah, just excited to play some new competition and um, we're ecstatic about making the jump and I uh, had a really good spring and I'm excited for this upcoming season. I think there's some really good football in Texas and we're um, happy to be part of this uh, conference. It's exciting for us. With this past spring and COVID and everything else, what are you look, looking forward to most with the being a quote unquote normal season? Yeah, hopefully? no, I think you just said it right on a normal, a little bit normal. You know, we, we, um, we were super excited to play in the spring and we wanted that, wanted that challenge. Those five games were awesome for us to see where we were, especially last year at this time, we were just coming in working out, seeing if we're going to have a schedule or not. And, and then it was, uh, was canceled. So our, I think our guys have put in a tremendous amount of work. And it's just fun to be able to be able to have, uh, like you said, normal planning towards a, towards a really fun schedule that we have. Uh, for both of you, what was the most difficult part of this past spring season? I don't know if the spring was as much difficult as the fall. The fall was the most difficult because we, every week we were like, are we going to play? Are mm -hmm. we not? You know? We had some teams call and reaching out to us so the coach would tell us and we'd be all excited and then all of a sudden it'd fall through and just kind of disappointing and so that that was the hardest part so I think we were just more excited for the spring. I don't think there was really anything difficult about it because we had eight months to prepare so that part was really nice. Yeah, I, I think he got it spot on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the hardest part was uh, in the fall trying to you know, see if there was going to be any games, you know, and but we uh, just went through and finished. Uh, we finished strong and then it was a good time to prepare us. And then, you know, it was exciting news to know that we were going to play a couple games in the spring to see where we were at. But yeah, it was fun. And Cody, for you, obviously a short season, but still zero interceptions. How much pride do you take in that? I take a lot of pride in that. <laughs> um, that was actually a big, big thing for me. I thought that was really cool. Uh, I've never had any stretch really doing that with how much I've always thrown the ball. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. I got lucky a couple times where <laughs> defenders dropped it, but hey, I'll take it. So. When you look forward now, how can you kind of keep that streak alive? I mean, obviously a lot of it has to do with precision and probably a little bit of luck in there too, but what can you do as a quarterback to prepare for that? Uh, I just watch film, you know, kind of get a feel for what the defense is going to be doing, where where there's going to be holes, where my receivers are going to be, you know, so just prepare, really just the more prepared I am, the more, the less likely I am to throw an interception, so. And coach, for you, how much have you seen both of these players grow throughout the program? They're fun, man. They've, they've done a great job exemplifying what we're about. We, we talk about these leadership principles of toughness and hard work and trust and accountability all the time. And, that's why they get to come because they, they're, they're great leaders. Um, they do everything right. They show up on time, um, really good in the classroom, and our guys like to follow them. And so um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing these upcoming season with them. It seems like it's a lot of fun. You can tell with the chemistry between all three of you, there's a lot of joking. But how do you make sure that that stays true even in the locker room and on, on the field? Uh, they're just fun kids, you know, just like being around. Our whole team's like this. We, we, we have a good time. We try not to take ourselves too, too seriously. You know, sometimes coaches, we can suck the fun out of it. You know, it's a little stressful for us. And, but we don't want them ever to feel it. We want them to be able to compete at a high level at the best they can. We'll, we'll prepare them. But there'll be times there's some seriousness. But, uh, you know, we treat them like our boys. And we have a good time when we're supposed to and, and get serious when we need to, too. So. For both of you, is there anything that the coaching staff does that makes it just a little bit easier to be yourself and be, you know, just go out there and play football? Oh, uh, no, like for me, I just kind of break the rules sometimes, you know. <laughs> the troublemaker here. <laughs> no, I don't know, no, like Coach Pete don't like us dancing on the field, but yeah, I just do it sometimes, you know. It's just, I'm just kind of used to it and, uh, you know, like they just don't want people to you know to get like distracted but you know I'm just uh, kind of used to it and uh, like always know when like when it's 
you know, serious timing when it's not. So it just depends on what time it is. But, you know, for Coach P, it's kind of a serious time every time. So, yeah. <laughs> Right. But for our defense coaches, they're always dancing. They're, we, have, we have coaches running on the field in the middle of plays trying to stop us from scoring touchdowns. It, it, it's just a fun time. We, kinda, we just have a party out there. It's just fun for everyone. We get our work done. And, but it's all like everyone jokes around, like kind of what you said. Our mm -hmm. coaches joke with us. Coach P will tell us that he could have made a throw that we don't make all the time because it, it, it's just fun. So. Uh, Cody, for you, Sacramento State's the first team on the schedule. How much prep have you started putting in looking forward to that first game? And you can be honest if you haven't started that at all. I know so, <laughs> camp hasn't started yet. Uh, so we haven't started any, like, Sac State prep yet. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done a lot of just our offense with our PRPs, our player run practices that we've been mm -hmm. doing. We just focus on kind of learning our playbook for all the new guys, just kind of com coming in prepared for fall camp. And then once we, get, once we get rolling with our own stuff, then we'll start focusing on them for sure. Coach, he mentions that PRP, the player run practices. How much do you rely on both of these players to really help mold the future players of this team? Yeah, so for compliance, I have no idea that they were doing that. They've done a good job from, from what I understand. You know, like I said, we can't, we can't be out there, but um, mm -hmm. it takes good leadership for them to get those guys out there. And... and um, and throw the ball around, get those, get, get it ready for, for fall camp so we don't miss a beat. And last season, uh, three teams scored 30 or more points. What can you do to lock down on this defense this year? Milwaukee, more tackles. <laughs> <laughs> we can ask both. No, that's, that's, that's good. We, um, you know, we're, we're up tempo, spread offense too, and so, so you know, we need to hold on the ball a little bit longer too and take care of the ball. So our defense is uh, um, off the field. Um, so that's an emphasis. You know, we've got a new, off, or excuse me, new defensive coordinator in Justin mm -hmm. Anna. And we're excited about uh, what he can add to our to our defense and help our guys execute at a high level. You know, we definitely need to do a better job of uh, stopping the run and, and getting the ball back for the offense. Malaki, I'll now toss it to you. <laughs> oh, we talk about the spring season or the we fall? We gave up too many points in the spring. She said. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it, that was good. I mean, that was a good feel. Uh, we got new guys coming in uh, where we need it because uh, – so, you know, we are a little small in the front, so we definitely got some bigger guys. So, yeah, it will be fun in the fall. But, yeah, I'll keep that in mind. And <laughs> I'll make sure it's 15 and below this fall. But, yeah. Is there any game for all three of you that you're really looking forward to playing on the schedule? All of them. Yeah. I'm excited to get back home. I think these first two home games will be awesome, Sac State and then Weber. Um, be an in-state rival for us and they're highly ranked they do a good job and we go back and forth recruiting battles with them and I know Coach Hill does a great job so we're excited to get them on our on our field those first two home games will set the tone for our season so we're excited about that same for me Weaver Weaver's definitely up there I wish we were playing SU this year that would that would definitely take the cake but no Weaver just being the in-state let's we win this game then maybe we can steal some of the bigger recruits from them and just work that way yeah, I feel like <laughs> all of them. But yeah, probably the most uh, exciting, exciting game that I want to play again is probably Tarleton. You know, give them a shot again, and uh, we'll see uh, where it goes from there. But yeah, that's that's fun. I've never been on a team that plays a national championship and the runner-up in the same year. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Uh, see uh, how this team rolls and what they do that makes them so special and then see how we can use that to build our team to you know to be able to make a run for it probably next year in two years when we're gone but yo that's good i think uh, you know talking about tarleton because we've had a chance to play them right so we have another shot at them um you know we're playing a bunch of new teams too so that they're going to start some new rivalries in the whack and Looking for Islanders, great coaches in, in this in this conference, and so being able to play them year in year out from here on will be, will be exciting for us to see. Like like Milwaukee said, what kind of brand of football is the Wack going to play? We'll look forward to it. All right, I'm going to send it over to Chris Thompson now for media questions. Okay. Chris Mikoski, ESPN Plus. Coach, you just talked about it, but I'd like to follow up on it. Just the schedule 
it's incredible to look at. I've, obviously, when you're piecing it together and you're trying to make sure you fill all the dates, it's one thing. Yeah. But then when you ha see it all together, like, ooh, what did I get myself into? <laughs> You know, I, Dr. Booth, our, our athletic director, did a, did, did a great job. And for me, it's like, you know, we're, we're not going to be scared of anybody, right? We're, we, we wanted the challenge. We're making this jump. Um, had a taste of it in the spring. So for us to play, uh, um, and these teams reached out to us to be able to play us, I, I mean, we're, we're looking forward to it. And we'll, we'll, we'll go out there swinging and fighting. And, and um, it's the, the best way to do it in my, in my mind. You know, I, I think, you know, the other philosophy would be kind of get an easy schedule, maybe get a – a few more Division Two teams in as we're transitioning, but I mean, I like this. I like it that we're we're playing the tough and the best, and and uh, it's going to help our program grow. I think a little bit faster than we'll, what it would otherwise. You're shaking your head, so I have to hear your answer on this too. I, I I'm excited for the hard schedule. I mean, you don't really prove where you're at until you play competition that's up there. I mean, we could play D two teams and we could put up 60 points by halftime again, but that's not really going to help us get any better. And so I'm excited for the hard schedule. Guys. Kind of going off of that question, you know, I think you might have seven or eight top 25 teams in there by the time it's all said and done. You know, what's the biggest thing you're looking at in terms of just kind of viewing this fall season as a, as a success? Yeah, I got that question a little bit earlier about, you know, I want to see the steps we took. Like I said, the five games in the spring were phenomenal for us to see that we, we had progressed. We got bigger, faster, stronger. We did some good things in recruiting. And so, so at the end of the season, what we want to see is, okay, each game, win or lose, how do we – uh, respond to adversity. How we, how do we get better? And then um, I, you know I like to think we're going to knock some of these big teams off too. How are we going to how are we going to respond to the success that we're going to have as well? You know are we going to still continue to build and grow? And that's the traje trajectory that we want as a program. Hey, Coach Rob Hip here. Uh, oh, sorry. Hey, Coach Rob Hip here, the radio voice of the Bearcats in, in Huntsville. Looking forward to having you guys come down to Huntsville later on this season. Uh, something I always like to ask, just what have you been most proud of with your program through COVID? And I know now entering your third year, just talk a little bit about the success you've had and what you've been most proud of with your, with your young men. Yeah, I just like the fight in them. You know, I think going through this adversity, it's tough. They're, they're um, a lot more pliable, I guess, and, and adjusted very well than us, us adults. You know, we want to. We wanted uh, everything to find for us. Um, I think these guys uh, were able to adjust. And, and, you know, it seemed like last year, this time in July, there was a new rule coming out every couple of weeks, what you can and can't do. And, and um, these guys just loved being around each other. And, and we had, we, you know, we had some, had some guys uh, come down with this, this awful pandemic disease, you know, and, and how they responded to one another. You know, I, I, think, I think they're just excited to get back to this normalcy that we're, we're talking about. And, um, and, and get out and compete and that's what they want to do that's what we're here for i think academically they did a very good job so i'm really proud of them that way i mean that's our number one goal is, is to get them a degree and represent our university well and 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 get out in the community as much as we can i think we did a really good job as much as we were able to do that as well um so now it's just now the fun part uh coming up here in a, in a few weeks to be able to play these games they've been they've been waiting for so just their resiliency and really proud of them that way uh Coach, we talked about this a little bit earlier on the Zoom uh, press conference, but uh, how excited are you to go give all your Southern Utah friends a hug uh, next year when they rejoin oh, the WAC? Oh, we hate them. We hate them. <laughs> you know, I was say, the birds fly upside down in Cedar City because there's nothing good to poop on up there. You know, that's <laughs> we we no, it's it's all in love. I, we we uh, I was up there. They gave me my first first job out of out of uh, being a graduate assistant. I was there for four years. No, Coach Warren, he's phenomenal. No, a lot of their staff. There are a lot of ex players up there. But um, it's going to be great for our community. Um, and it'll pack the stands. We were looking forward to it in, in 2020, but it got canceled. Um, and um, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're definitely sorry. I know some of their students got flooded out. There's some crazy storms up there, so we're hoping they're okay. But um, looking forward to that rivalry. It's, it's great. The, the St. George and Cedar City go way back when there's two high schools and throwing rocks at buses and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll bring it back. There's a, there's a trophy with it, a hatchet. You know, so hopefully we can keep that with us. And, um, but they do a great job, again, help us with, with recruiting, and, and uh, we're looking forward to that rivalry. Uh, for the players, the WAC has a very strong football history going back, and there's some uh, very good players, some of the best football players ever in the, the Hall of Fame that have won that WAC patch. What does it mean to you and your teammates to now be able to say you guys played in the WAC like some of the greats did? I just found out LT played in the WAC. 
earlier today. That was I, that was crazy. I didn't even know. I didn't know that. I didn't know all a bunch of those teams that used to be in it. So that, that was really cool to learn. Uh, I think we're just excited. You know, we get to play. Actually, I don't know if we get to play for a WAC championship yet. I know we have some sort of ban for a couple of years since for the transition, but we get to play for a championship sooner or later. And you know that that's a big deal to to us players. Like. We walked in and Milwaukee was like, "Hey, dude, look at the trophy over there." And so, so that, it's always nice to play towards something like that, where you know we're, we can end up being the best team out of eight eight teams or however many we have in the conference. And you know, that's that's a big goal for us. Um, yeah, I'm just blessed to have the opportunity to play football here. But yeah, it's gonna be great. Okay, any other questions? Coach, uh, Caleb Beams, KTRE Television, Nacogdoches. You talk about your Southern Utah rivalry, but now you're picking up all these Texas schools that are joining the WAC. How excited are you to come down to Texas where football's king and, you know, develop new rivalries? Yeah, we love Texas football. I, I um, you know, we got a little feel of playing at, playing at Tarleton, and, and, and you know, we, we uh, got after them a little bit, and they came back to our place and got after us, and so, you know, I think I think that's why we wanted to play them. We, this is it's good football. What they give, they showed something uh, with the Friday Night Lights, and I couldn't recognize the picture of it. But um, but yeah, eat, eat, drink, sleep football. I love it, man. I think I think uh, uh, it's healthy and, it, and it's a fun sport and a great sport and great for communities to get them all out there. And, and uh, we're looking we're looking forward to getting some new rivalries and playing some some new football teams. It'll be good. Alrighty, gentlemen. Well, thank you both so much, or all three of you so much. And I know you guys did all your other rooms, so safe travels back home. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Alrighty, we will be back around 1.30 p.m. Central Time for uh, three more press conferences that we've got going on here. So make sure you check back in on the WAC Digital Network and Facebook Live. <laughs> right. Yeah, you didn't do this.